Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, August 28th, 2020. Uh, this is Scott McGann with the Falmouth Health Department doing a weekly COVID update for Falmouth. Uh, the phone number is 508-495-7485 for the Health Department. Email is health at falmouthma.gov and falmouthmass.us is the website for um, COVID information and um, anything health or any other department uh, thing at the town. So that is falmouthmass.us. Uh, jumping right into it, as of August 28th, there are 241 cases of COVID since the beginning, our first case on March 19th. These are uh, Falmouth residents, molecular positive of what we call PCR or viral test results. So this does not include somebody who may have obtained it here and lives elsewhere. It's also somebody who might be a Falmouth resident uh, who lives elsewhere may count as a Falmouth case. So for example, uh, somebody who is visiting here from Connecticut uh, if they did obtain it, because I do get this question a lot. It wouldn't show up in this number, but nor would. But what does show up in this number might be in April, you know, in April when we have a lot of people coming back from Florida. If they tested positive in Florida, they may count as Falmouth cases. So the number is what it is. It's residents. It's a resident number. Um, it's 241. And that is uh, the same number which the presentation I gave you last week. So there's been no confirmed cases through the period of August 17th to the 28th, which is great. Um, about 99, almost 100% of the total cases are no longer in isolation. Uh, Falmouth has approximately 13.1 of all cases in Barnstable County. 14 would be expected, so we're doing slightly better than the county in general um, for case uh, based on our population. And again, the VNA and the contact tracing collaborative at the state, along with the help from the health department, continue to do the isolation and contact tracing on any cases that may come in. So nothing's changed in that regard. Falmouth's weekly case trend, you can see where we're doing really well over the last couple of weeks. We did well in the June-July period, and we've had a late July, early August. We started to have a blow up with a couple of situations that we had, um, and it looks like our trend is back down into that low range that we saw in the mid-July, and I'd like to continue that. You've seen that the curve is sort of flattened. We, we can see where our peaks early on. We started hot and heavy, like I always say, in March-April. Uh, again, uh, in mid-May, we had another uptick. We had an uptick in July. Um, and we've done, well, at least over the last couple of weeks, we've definitely flattened that out. This next chart is updated weekly on the state's website, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, they used to be white and green. They changed it this week to gray. So gray and green mean you're, in, you're, you're doing well. It means it's also important when we talk about school reopenings that the state wants in-person uh, learning uh, at the green and gray phases. Uh, yellow and red are um, phases where you consider doing more remote. Um, those, that changes every two weeks based on when they pull the data. So some towns have been complaining about why they're in the yellow or in the green. I actually thought last week we should have been in the gray, but it depends on when they pull the number, where the case, last case came from, and so forth. Um, these will change, and the other thing to think about, too, is if we have a long-term care facility, uh, have a lot of cases, that might bring us to the yellow. And, but is, the, is those cases necessarily relevant to schools? So things like that, so that even being in the yellow could be an issue that happened um, as a sort of a, con a congregate living sort of arrangement, which would be looked at different from, you know, community spread. So, you know, if you're the town of Walpole and you have a large prison and they count those numbers, I, don't, I, don't know if, I believe they do, against the town of Walpole, then, you know, obviously you would take that. It's a congregate living for arrangement. Um, not community spread. So um, that has to be taken into account when you look at the metrics as um, far as the schools are concerned. Uh, go, moving on to uh, the numbers. Again, our case counts remain the same. Um, our incidence rate is lower. Um, we're on a downward trend. Our percent positivity of tests, we issued about uh, 1,289 tests. The week before was 1,336. Our percent positivity is 0.31, so that means about three in every thousand tests are coming back positive, which is very low. Uh, also, the test is very sensitive, so it and I believe it also tends to err towards false positives, so that's a very low number uh, because you could even get some false positives out of that. Uh, Barnstable County as a whole is, uh, has an instance rate around one per 100,000, and the percent positivity on the CAPE has been around 0.5%. Um, for the last couple of weeks, so 0, uh, 0.53 down to uh, 0.45. And these metrics are all used uh, about what phase we should be in with schools. Um, you know, I don't have a separate slide on this, but uh, you can go to the Department of Ed uh, mass edu slash COVID-19, and it's got a ton of guidance, uh, tons of attachments. 
um, you know, so much it would take you, you know, weeks to read. And the schools have been using that guidance uh, uh, to set up the schools and to set up the, uh, how things are going to work. Um, so that's sort of the metrics uh, that we look at on a weekly basis. Again, that comes out on Wednesdays, uh, usually around 5, 6 o'clock before it comes out, on the state's COVID dashboard, which we'll talk about the daily one in a second. Um, as far as Falmouth is concerned, we're doing uh, well with the uh, testing rate. We're little, I think 1,300 around there is where we go to the darker. We're a little darker blue. But we, we're all, we were within 50 or so tests from um, the previous week. And our percent positivity um, remains in a good form. The lighter the color, the better on this chart. This is the one on the right uh, that shows you that our percent positivity. So we're testing a lot and not finding it as much, and that's obviously a good, uh, a good trend that we want to maintain. Uh, county cases, as you can see, early on in April and May, it was on the uh, 39 a day, 42, and things of that nature. We ticked way down into the June, July, so it's very similar to Falmouth. Had an uptick in that late July, early August, because our numbers go into this as well, but it's also, you know, other towns had a little uptick. And it's been pretty good since mid-August, and that's kind of what we're hoping to maintain is that 01013 type of number um, on that chart. And that's also, you can get this one off the Barnstable County's website. Um, they update this, I'm not quite sure how often. I think it's every few days or maybe once a week. Um, again, getting back to the daily, Barnstable Daily's cases were four. You see some of the other counties that are struggling, such as uh, Suffolk, uh, Middlesex, and Essex. So we were seeing more, more, more of the cases are in that Boston to Lynn area, sort of the North Shore, Revere, uh, down through there. It's been seeing some of the bulk of these cases recently. Uh, the daily dashboard, which you get daily uh, around 4 o'clock, shows that uh, yesterday's case count was 365 out of 25,000 tests with 20 confirmed deaths. Uh, the death rate has been on the high side for the cases. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe these are cases from, you know, the, there's always a, a delay in death. So these might be cases that are um, several, many weeks old and that are, are turning out that way. Uh, but our total death has been uh, 8775. Uh, our total confirmed cases were 117. It's, that's kind of an average day of what we've been seeing on, um, on the daily dashboard. Um, obviously, we were, when we were down in that 200, 180 range when we were testing 10 or 11,000, but they weren't counting people that had been tested a second time for some reason. So that test number has gone way up. So we're, we're averaging over 20,000 tests uh, per day. Um, th this metrics chart shows you the indicators. Again, let me go back to the previous slide that shows some of these blue, uh, green and yellow indicators. Um, and then the chart, the, the previous slide shows you where we are. So you want to be in the green, and most of these we are in the green. Healthcare readiness, we're in progress. And our death rate is still in the in progress. I think it still needs to go down before we get to uh, the positive trend. But uh, there's a delay among that. Um, is, is, it's not telling you what's currently happening. A lot of times there's a, a quite a bit of delay during the hospitalization and the time it takes. Um, so in this chart, our percent positivity for the state was 1%. Uh, again, this number has dropped a lot, uh, a lot of times because we've added tests that we weren't counting before, which will lower the positivity. But the positivity being at one is a very low. Under one, it, it, it's, it's working its way out of, the, out of uh, circulation. So one, you know, getting below one is a number. We want to love to keep have, driving that number down lower and lower. More tests, less, less positives, obviously. Uh, hospitalization has been bouncing around. Um, Early, uh, let's say right around the uh, mid-August, let's see, July was in the, three, we're in the 370s, 380s into July. Uh, got a little higher around that 400 mark around mid-August, and now we're back into the low, to the lower below 350 count. Um, but our lowest count was uh, 313 of hospitalizations, total hospitalizations throughout the state um, was our lowest. So we're 8% higher than the lowest possible number that we had on the 23rd. And that number does fluctuate, so... Um, I think it's relatively flat in general. Uh, surge capacity, we've been bouncing around. We're in that one to three range, and that's going to depend on what's going on at the hospital to begin with. It shows you that there's some maybe localized uh, upticks and so forth. Uh, we've been in the four or less for a while. And then deaths, we've been in that teens. We've been stuck in sort of the teens, you know, anywhere from 12 to 16. Um, this is the three-day average of deaths. Uh, hospitalizations are at 333. We're down 68 from August 7th, 16 from July 22nd, uh, and down 487 uh, daily hospitalization rate uh, um, from June 26th. Uh, Falmouth Hospital has been zeros uh, for the most part. Um, 
maximum of one over the last uh, many weeks. Cape Cod Hospital uh, had been zero and one. Uh, they were at two the last time I checked on the 27th. Uh, but the hospitalizations and the need to have uh, overflow has not been not something that we've had to have here on the Cape. Uh, ICUs were down uh, 24 from August 7th, down to 61, and down nine from August 7th for those that are currently intubated, which means the vent. And that number uh, does fluctuate, but you can get this again daily at the uh, mask uh, DPH site. Uh, we haven't had any issues in the last several couple, since early August, late July. Uh, at one nursing facility, with these numbers are unchanged. Uh, the number of uh, deaths are 5,772, which is about 65, 66% of all deaths in Massachusetts have been associated to long-term care. So the metrics look uh, pretty flat in the, you know, low and flat for the state. Uh, and looks really good so far for the Cape over the last couple of weeks. And again, those are the trends that we like to see. Well, I like to see the state go down, especially with death. Um, COVID-19 testing is right now unchanged. There is a lot of talks about working on uh, rapid, cheap, and really good testing. Obviously, that's something that we still need uh, even more. Um, the COVID testing still occurs through uh, Cape Cod Healthcare at the call center. So use the 862-5595 number. Um, it's still up there. Our site is still up at the at the hospital, up in the back park, up in the parking lot. Uh, I guess that would be a west parking lot. Um, the uh, Barnstable is still doing theirs. Uh, I believe it, it was supposed to be at Four Seas. I think it's moved. I should up, double check this and update it for the next one. Is uh, it might have moved over to um, Cape Cod Hospital. You also can get it at CVS um, in East Falmouth, the walk-in clinics like Convenient Care MD, the Community Health Center of Cape Cod and Mashpee. You can look for other sites at mass.gov-covid testing. Um, testing will continue to be enhanced, I hope, as time progresses, um, as different types of methods come in. Now, getting into the different types of tests, the PCR, the viral test, the one, that you, the one that's the gold standard, the one that counts as a confirmed case is the viral DNA PCR test. It does take greater than usually 24 hours to several days, and that's where sort of the choke is on this, and we really want to make sure that gets better, but the, the lab, Working hard with the labs, Cape Cod Healthcare is working with lab uh, capacity to work on these private labs that do the, uh, do the results and, and, and enhancing their ability to have a more rapid turnover. It's the one that's determined whether you have an active infection, and it's the only one that's considered a confirmed case. Antigen tests tell you that there's a past well, a current infection. It's a rapid result. Its accuracy is not nearly that of PCR. Um, and it's got too many false, uh, you know, false positives and, and false negatives out there that we, you know, it, it is not, it's considered a probable under DPH's guidance. Um, it's always a recommendation if you come positive on an antigen that you'd go get a PCR test and, you know, isolate yourself and do a PCR test. Antibodies are definitely telling you a past infection, usually around three weeks or later. It's rapid result, it is very cheap. I think MDH, um, uh, the DPH is going to move that to a suspect case. Um, it's not that effective to, to sort of figure out who should be at work and who shouldn't be and who should be at school and who shouldn't be it's because it's telling you of a past infection. It's not telling you that you have a current infection, you know, and um, it's not necessarily rec recommended by healthcare providers and not by the state as well. Uh, but it's good to see, let's say you were sick in some point but never got tested, especially in that February, early March range when it was hard to get tests and maybe even to April, you had a cold or flu-like symptoms, and you can always have your antibodies checked. Um, but it's not really uh, something that we're doing to actually do case management and determining. Uh, social distancing, this slide, I've had this up for several weeks. Again, mandatory face coverings in Woods Hole and Luscombe Ave. All right? uh, Woods Hole, Luscombe Ave, Railroad Ave, Water Street area, Main Street as well. Um, we follow up on complaints regarding face masks, social distancing, business complaints, bus complaints, things of that nature. Uh, as of August 1st is that new travel guidance that's still into place or in place regarding a 14-day uh, quarantine for most out-of-state areas. Again, can, the thing is is that when, I, when, I, when we come on and we talk about the fact that the numbers look really good in the, on the Cape and in Falmouth, that doesn't mean we, need to take, we can take our eyes off the ball. So we still need to do the diligence with the social distancing and the face coverings, the hand washing and the hand sanitizing. Uh, we need to make sure we're doing the quarantining if you're, if you're doing travel. That's where, obviously, you would be importing it. It's very critical that if you're going to do some traveling, um, that you follow the guidance as well. So if you're going somewhere and you come back from an area of higher infection, you need to quarantine for 14 days or have a negative uh, uh, result from a PCR test within 72 hours. 
So that's what we really need because um, generally the, the cases will be imported from another location. I mean, if we're pretty darn close to zero right now, it has to come in from somewhere, and that would be uh, from travel for the most part. Uh, staying home and ill and following the state guidance, especially business owners following the sector-specific guidance. I think for the most part, you know, we get some of the same places over and over again that we work with. Um, but I think in general, the businesses have done really well with it in general. Uh, obviously, the last thing we want to do is undo the hard work that we've, um, we've, we've done so far. And um, so, you know, that is my weekly, uh, you know, update on that. Um, that I just, you know, people, I don't want people to become complacent. You know, we just need to keep focusing because we know that the masks and social distancing um, and avoiding large gatherings and parties, especially indoors, works. It, um, to recap last slide, uh, state metrics are flat. Falmouth cases are very low, zero for the week, which is great. And the current level that we're phase we're in, we're still in phase three, step one. Uh, any, any specific guidance questions, if you're a business owner or looking to reopen or anything like that, you just contact the health department. So that's what I have for this week, and I'll see you guys next Friday. Thanks.